Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are honored and uh, we are honored to have uh, Andrea Mon, uh, my friend and our colleague here, uh, who is visiting us from the Netherlands, Rotterdam. So I'm going to just review her, uh, her uh, biography here. Andrea Moen is the principal of AM Architects, an international architectural firm situated in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, with 21st uh, successful years of producing high quality architecture with a focus on healthcare design. She attended the Technical University of Berlin, the University of Stuttgart, and the Technical University of Delft, the latter on an Erasmus scholarship. In 1994, she graduated from Stuttgart uh, with a distinction. Her main interests lie in the influence of social, cultural, and economic spheres open architectural today. Uh, open architecture today. Her research in this field, as well as her extensive interaction throughout the design process with both clients and users of the buildings, have had a significant impact on her work and approach. This multidisciplinary approach has led to many innovative new concepts, resulting in numerous successful projects, many of which have received international attention and acclaim, and appeared in publications around the world. Alongside working at her firm, Andrea has lectured at Delft Technical University and been invited as a visiting critic at the University of Stuttgart and many other universities. At this moment, she is uh, she's a lecturer at the Academy of Architecture and Urban Design in Rotterdam and the University of Applied Sciences in Frankfurt. As I mentioned, it's our pleasure to have Andrea here. I have, uh, uh, I have had the pleasure of, of, of knowing Andrea in the last, I think, six, seven months since our Rotterdam uh, program happened. And then since then, we have been in touch through Skype meetings. And I have been amazed of, of the work that she is doing in, in Europe. And, uh, and hopefully, uh, her projects will be published in a couple of years uh, uh, in a comprehensive book. And uh, we are really honored to have her here, and we all welcome her to uh, our city, Baltimore, and see us here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me very well? It's a great honor to be here. It's a really great pleasure to, to speak for this audience. Thank you for coming. Um, as Mohamed mentioned, I'm specialized on healthcare architecture, in healthcare architecture, and um, especially the personalized, the focus on one person, or really the person, a human being, and to uh, the holistic approach, really to look what somebody needs. I would like to take you through all my projects, or a couple of projects, and to show you the way I work and the results we booked. And uh, I would also like to finish with some results uh, when, when I was teaching. So how can we implement this at the academy and help students to find a way to um, look for this personal-centered personal um, approach? It's a personalized and humanized architecture. I, that is my topic, I think, most important thing. <laughs> and thank you. I'm trying to get it to stop. It's fine. Um, I would like to take you to my youth because everything has a starting, as you all know, and some things have a big impact on you. And where, when I were a little child, my father was often very ill, and uh, we visited him in, in the hospital. I call this a machine. It's a perfect and very good hospital. You all know these machines, of course. Um, and it's really from the 70s. And even as a child, nine years old, I felt like, God, how somebody can get healthy here in this environment. You entered, it was a dark concrete block, never ending corridors up to the sixth floor. And then finally, this safe heaven, just these two in Germany, we say, or in German, Holland, we say, these two square meters of bed. This was this safe island, you know. There was the warmth of my father, and everything, everything was fine there, but just there. And imagine somebody has to become healthy in such a hospital. So even as a child, I thought, oh, they could do better, I think. 
But what could change that? What can change that? Um, most of us learned during our studies that aesthetic aspects and uh, technical aspects play an uh, immense role, and the most focus is always on that. But I think we should really focus on the third point as well, sociological and psychological aspects, and bring all together. And with this approach, we can reach completely other results, book other results. So I will show you, um, heading through my projects, the topics that became very important, in my opinion. So we, I start with atmosphere, of course. This is a project as we got it, like this, and they said, make something from that. Um, we need extra facilities, extra group rooms. This is a daycare center for mentally disabled uh, people. And uh, we changed it to this. And it's uh, close to Delft, and it's in a muddy area. There's a, a nice, it's, it's uh, on the other side of the city, and the, the forest is starting, and it's very muddy. Holland is very low, low level. So we said we work with this famous old-fashioned material thatch, like they use for windmills and things. And if you use it um, as vertical as possible, then the rain can drop down, and you have almost nothing to do for almost 70 years, which is quite interesting. So it's also very ecological, and um, but it, it gives a fantastic atmosphere. And I just focus on some things while I take, uh, tell the projects because I have a lot of projects to show you. Uh, things like that, we, there, there were these old two um, concrete, or these, these um, rick stone blocks and we added this new volume and gave, this, gave it this new facade, but we made a little, like a knick, do I say this? This movement, it's not just a straight wall, but if you are sitting on the terrace, then you can see that it, it feels, you feel protected. It's like a big hug around you. Um, then they said, oh, couldn't you make a fence because otherwise the handicapped people run away. And we said, no, come on, we are not going to make a fence around the terrace. So my partner came with the idea to shape the landscape a bit, to make it a bit hilly. So for the people, it's like, okay, the world is ending here and they stay on the terrace and it's really nice. And you can work with these simple elements. So you can cause well-being. It's very important to cause well-being with this atmosphere. This is from the other side, completely... Uh, total home makeover, and it was nice to work with these craftsmen, these old crafts, and to, to um, feel this and reuse it. And for them it was also a task because they had to do it um, not vertical, but even hanging over, which is quite special for them. Usually you make a roof like this. So they said, we have never done this before, you see. And this is in the entrance hall. What we usually do, we bring the material also into the building to get this feeling and to have a connection. This is above the reception. So we brought it inside and combined things. And now it's, of course, the color is now gray. This is normal for a touch. But they even went on and they, they made a beautiful garden where the, the handicapped people can walk around and enjoy. So if you make something beautiful, they, they take the project and bring it to life and go on with it. So the integration in the environment is very important, as you saw. And this is the next project. It's uh, also a daycare center for mentally disabled. And they had these fence around, and they were really sitting like animals in just in a common neighborhood, you know? That, that respectless, and, and um, they were like kind of caged animals. And we also had to do a facelift for this building. And then we said, oh, actually, the problem is, the, is maybe the, the fence. So why don't we do the facelift with a fence? And what we did is that we made a natural environment. It's, there's a lot of green and landscape around, so we use these sheep, uh, these, these uh, farm sheep uh, um, fences, and we work together with an with a, with a artist who um, makes a beautiful patterns. You hardly can see, you can see it better on the next, but it's actually the fence became the, the facelift. So here's the strategy, and then another completely new building. And it also became more e ecological. What we did is that, yeah, we worked with these artists. This is a, a chestnut, um, um, these are chestnut trees in Kent, and they are photographed, and it's really nice to integrate art projects as well, because handicapped people really, um, it's very, very useful for them, and it's very good for the atmosphere. So the improvement of a place, this has been inside. In the old building, when you entered, this was the first thing you saw, this big, mess, these green chairs, and then also there's a, there's a sign, and you can also find us on the first floor, you know, 
a building should never be like this, that you need signs to go to somewhere and to, to show that. And we completely changed the interior. We uh, located the entrance at the site and created a new, new entrance. But also practical things like that the floor went up, so when they come with the wheelchairs, they cannot demolish the, the, the things. And we integrated this uh, wooden project, this um, art project as well, inside. Nice interior where they can sit together. So the logistics also play a role. How do you get somewhere? How some all these, this stuff uh, is brought somewhere? So here, this is the old floor plan. You have the daycare center here. And then on top there were two uh, dwellings, well, uh, buildings with dwellings. We renovated later. And we said we are not going to have the parking in the middle that ruins completely this, um, this, this park and they, they don't have an outside space. So we put the parking here, we make a nice park and we bring the nature again inside here. So we opened all this, oops, I'm too fast, <laughs> and uh, uh, made a connection with the landscape about logistics. This is not about psychiatry, but this is a hospital in Hamburg for the University Heart Clinic. And I just want to show you because about logistics, this is very complex, very com complicated to make it work. Just how, how you get done such floor plans, I maybe you all know this and learn this, and this is 50,000 square meters. How can you organize all these things? These are things we've done too, how to make a green environment. And what we did, that we integrated a canyon so that the parking garage has natural ventilation and you and when you're in the parking garage you can you can look at the green um, canyon and it's just friendly but we also introduced a, a waterfall here so when you get over the bridge and you enter the building building you get this interaction that you hear just the waterfall when you're in the parking garage you feel the water running down and, and I hear it and it's just this experience and it's so important to make these, the, to, to reach these special effects. So that brings me to the next project. It's a medical center for mentally disabled. It's a very complex situation because you have people who have a very low level and still have to find their way to their dentist, to their physiotherapist. They cannot go to a normal hospital because they are dead breakable. So we made this medical center, or it actually was a renovation. I'll show you, this is the old building. It's almost 5,000 square meters. It's really huge with a swimming pool and a gym and medical center and daycare, and it's really huge. And we renovated it, it was from the 70s. It looked like this. And nobody saw and had any hope for that. We said, we will change this. <laughs> so this is another part. This was inside, this was the entrance. And this is how things, happen and go over, over 40 years, right? This, is, uh, this was an office of a doctor, this was a print shop, and it's really a big mess. So what we did, because they had different entrances, we said you need one really clear entrance, one main entrance, and then you know this is a medical center, everybody's entering here. So we renovated the old building, took away these different entrances, and we added just one volume. So we renovated and we added this one volume, and then this whole building became a new atmosphere. This was first, this was after. Just new wooden tiles, just painted things, not with these ugly colors, but just more calm. And uh, it became an elegant and nice building. Nice details for the new part, carefully detailed. Yeah. It's really a, really a, a building with big well-being. We opened this old facade and we made meeting rooms here. And that's how it is now. So on the right you see this old outside facade and these corridors just uh, going along. What was very important that we um, worked together with the team. It was quite complicated because we had different facilities. We had medicines, we had um, secretaries, um, physiotherapists, uh, from the building, from the construction uh, um, service, all these people had had an idea about what they wanted to have and what they needed and was what was important. So we made workshops and meetings. We made long lists where we were writing down how many square meters and what. And I think that's very important to 
uh, involve everybody in the process. So the plans were discussed, and again, and they were writing down, we need this, that, and so after three rounds, we, we were there, and I st they, they still love the building very much. And what we did was, this is, you, maybe you remember, this is the old building, and we added this, just this part, but we gave this, uh, a meet, we made this a meeting area and as well also for therapy. So they can also uh, give treatments there. There are more the agogic uh, therapies, like ergo and, phys and physio and sports is here, physical therapy. The doctors are here, medical care. And on the, second fl on the first floor, there are the office um, rooms with flexible work areas. You said I can, I can interrupt, I interrupt. Yes, uh, yes, I, I told you. So, so uh, you described the process with meeting with stakeholders and there yes. contributing. Can you give an example of like a, um, sort of a feature or an element that was contributed or negotiated with these stakeholders? Because you know, I, I can imagine the conversations like that go in the United States, and it's always about almost impulses of personal preferences rather than. I mean, how do you guide their. Than <laughs> That's a very good question. Actually, they all had their personal preferences, and the more intelligent they were, and the verbal better in the conversation, the, the higher they were in the ranking kind, but you still have to give everybody his chance and really carefully wait what, what is realistic and what is needed. And thank God we had a very good manager from them who said yes, no in the end. So or uh, this is, the, the, okay, you need, of course, we re try to reach everything so that everybody was happy. And I think, I think for 95% we could do that, and 5% we said this is really too much. And but then they respect it because we really carefully listened, and then you can reach a lot. Yeah, and you have to visualize it hey? in the process. You have to make nice visual, yeah, and show this. So this corridor again. Um, I would like to talk about simulation because what we did, we said if you make these meeting rooms, it's really nice to get, go one step further. So. We worked together with artists again, and we asked them to make uh, b beautiful wall uh, paintings for the, for the background of the meeting rooms. So what they did, they made pigs from pearls, elephants with feathers. So just that for the handicapped people, so they, they, usually they have a level of a three or four year old child, right? So they are sitting in these meeting rooms, and that, that, that's, that's so interesting to trigger them and that, to stimulate them, and that they say, but this is not right, <laughs> there has to be something else. But also for just the people who do the treatment, it's nice and stimulating. So they have uh, concentration working spaces, meeting rooms, um, peacock. And you see, and, and what we also did, this was also important, we also introduced curtains, because sometimes they have um, uh, a therapy where somebody starts to cry and you have to take a tissue and you have to close the curtain and have this privacy, but also it's also open, possible to open it and to have this visual interaction. And they, they love these spaces, it's always fully booked. Uh, on the top floor we made these hippos from soap bubbles, this is the inspiration room. And this is the one I love most. This is so unexpected, beautiful. Just this? Yeah. <laughs> You can take a picture. <laughs> yeah, Nemo, just it's really cute. An orientation for people who are handicapped or with this, uh, psychological problems, orienta orientation is always very, very important. And it's, it should be in a natural way without too much way signing and so. So these people enter and then they have three directions so they can go to the physical therapy, they can go to the agogic therapy or to the doctors. And we worked uh, with these uh, artists with um, signboards. Um, so this is the overview of the where you have the reception. It's also important to have this really clear overview. We made like little treasure boxes to put very beautiful stuff they have instead of a stupid vitrine. What is this like? Where you can just all these things just made special effects. Very clear also where somebody with a wheelchair could enter and, and, and ask a question. And then we had these signs. So an uh, antelope for the sport activities made from tennis balls. Then they made really beautiful pictograms for all these things because some, lots of people cannot read. They have to do it in a visual way and then they find their room. We had these dolphin made from trumpets for the agogic part and these beautiful books in front of the medical stuff. 
And then I like to focus on this bench because what is important too is that you think about they ha often hardly can see. So it's like, like elderly, it's like really old people and they have to grab um, this and directly feel, oh, can, here we can sit down, that this is the right place and not sitting directly next to each other. It's also important, just this all these little things play a role to feel them comfortably. I have to. Yeah. Did the selection of the artwork have to do with the placement of these rooms? No. So let's say, okay. No, no, we first had the idea of where we had which service. And then I thought, I, I really want to make something special with these walls. And then we found this office and then uh, we asked them to cooperate. Yeah. This is the, the um, entrance for the medical stuff. But you also have this beautiful view to the outside. And then this bench, for example, nine people can sit here, or even ten. And it's just, it's just an island. They can put the, the, the magazines on it, but it's quite compact. And they can all sit separately from each other, which is very, very important. Then things like, because very often they drive with these electric wheelchairs, so we had, we had the idea of making this forest on the right side, but we also added sticks or these, these vertical lamels on the, on the left side so that they really see, oh, we have to stay on this track, just between these two things. On the first floor, we made a very creative working environment for the stuff with this inspiration room, concentration room. This was actually an old safe and we transformed it into a meeting room. Okay, this is the, the coffee table. It's really lovely. Uh, islands where they can work together. And then this is also uh, something I like. Then they said, we don't want to have only concentration working spaces. We want to have a one-to-one -one table where just some colleague or a handicapped person can drop by with a question. And we you can sit there and you're not sitting at a normal office desk, but you have another talk with each other. So they, they love this very much. This is now, and this has been before, sorry, it's not sharp, but it says a lot about this big transformation. And uh, I'm very glad that we were highly commended for the European Healthcare Design Award for Mental Health Care uh, in June for this project. About orientation, this is one of my favorite projects to show about orientation. And one of my first I did. This is a daycare center and this is for people with mental disabilities that, that are adults but have the age of babies. So like zero to 18 months. And they had to find their way intuitively into their room, to do the group. Imagine, how do you manage it with babies? So we said, okay, no signs, nothing. And what we do is just we make a honey colored wall that is lightened from the top, you see at the background. So they walk to that wall, it's friendly. And then in this wall, you have these, this is lined on the top, it's just an island. And then you have these niches where you can go into the groups, group, uh, the rooms for the groups. It's very, very simple. And the other side is uh, just covered with the same color of the floor, so it's not that important. And then they feel very safe. So inside you can see, you enter, and then you go just to this, this right wall. But what I like and why I show this picture is that when they really love a building, then sometimes they do, don't do things you really don't like that much, but it, it shows that they identify with this building. It's, it has its 10th year's anniversary now, and it's still the same. And that says a lot. And always when I ask, How would you, what would you have done different, or what is wrong now? No, nothing, it's still fine, because they were involved in the process, and that, that makes me so happy. It's hard for you to follow the lecture because of the sun, it's okay, yeah? So, and, and, and a little detail too, you see this little brown path here. Um, sometimes you see that it's interrupted, and then they are allowed to enter the room, and they really understand that. So on the side of the groups, they can enter the groups, and where the stuff is, then they just, just go on and follow their way. Inclusiveness, so everybody can go everywhere. Nobody ex ex is excluded, even in a wheelchair or blind or whatever. So we have these bridges and this excess. And I would like to show you the next project. This was a building with dwellings for mentally disabled. And they had one, one big wish. They said, we really want to live in a real house, like normal people. So this feeling of being normal is extremely important and should be 
um, you should always listen to that. So they did not want you to live anymore in the pavilion. That is so useful. And we decided to make a real house and to make dwellings on the first floor and on the, on the ground floor, on the first and the second. And we implemented this big ramp, which goes around the trees. This is an old um, row of trees. And this, is, uh, this was an important identity. And they said, we will not cut these trees. They have to stay. And we just built the building around, because they all noticed this lane of trees. So you go up the ramp and you can touch and grab the, the trees, and then you go to the first floor. And what is really nice is that they all have their own entrance on the first floor and on the second floor. So every, every dwelling has really its own identity. This was just the idea for the building, because it's a very long building. We zigzagged it, and then you, instead of a 110 meter long building, you get just small parts, and we concentrated just on around a beautiful area and made it more intimate. This is on the other side of the bridge, where you, you can uh, get up also with three, by three stairs. This was just before all the plants grew. And then everybody's really equal. When you are on top, you can enter your, to your dwelling. And you see that every dwelling has a number. They have a bench in front. You can sit down or grab their key or whatever. And inside, when it's winter, they can sit inside and just look outside because they love it to, to watch people. And it's white and black, so they clearly can see uh, the white part is there, there are the entrances. And we worked with these very old um, wood, kind of wood. It's a very typical tradition to um, work with dark brick stone or wood in Holland. And then you have these white frames, because in Holland you do not have a contrast like in Spain. You can work with one material, and then you have just a sh by shadow you make an effect. But in Holland there's almost kind of same grey weather. So what they, but if you look into the landscape, you always see these white framed houses, or in Amsterdam you also see these white, and this makes you so happy. It's a very friendly effect. So ground floor, first, second floor, with these different dwellings. We really talked a lot with them about how they can shape the, the, the rooms uh, in different ways, how they can make apartments, combine things to make one big uh, bathroom or whatever. So this is also part of the story. This is our little daughter <laughs> in, in, in one of these areas where you, when you enter, you do not have a closed wall, but you just see this um, little green area where you can chill and sit. Yes. When, when um, the residents spoke about wanting to feel like a real home, uh, I'm anticipating that, that you interpreted that to mean certain kinds of ic iconographic elements of architecture, yeah. the roof or the, maybe the kinds of windows. Can you elaborate a little bit on that, with how you interpreted that? Well, it, actually you see here the house. So we said this is, this is really the section or the, the yeah. idea that everybody thought about that. That's what we had to do. And they are really happy. They really feel normal now, as they told me. Yeah. And they cook together. It's very important. The outside space. So you create identity with that. And um, they really identify with their, with their building. Just a step sidewards uh, for a psychiatric clinic, a little chapel. We renovated. It was first, it was like this. It was big mess and, and, and brown and not friendly and very low, the ceiling. And we just made it light, made an art project, made new, took new, designed new furniture, and we gave this a completely other atmosphere. It's really a well-being, and it's very important for their therapy. That's why I show it for this psychiatric uh, clinic in a landscape. Materiality is very important, and we carefully always look that we design beautiful objects or uh, the materials we use are really, really uh, friendly for the users. At the moment we um, build a work home. This is a, um, these are four buildings with three dwellings. Three are dwellings and one is with a daycare center and they can have a, a career like um, when, when you're handicapped it's very difficult to get better. But uh, if you create certain situations you can improve that and people can uh, first start in with a the family, then feel safer, and more and more they get more and more independent, independently, and they can live uh, in apartments on their own. 
So this is really in the Dutch landscape where we try to create something that is very familiar to what they know and to create a safe environment with all these dwellings. And it's uh, the idea is that they have chicken and sell eggs and, and uh, bake pies and sell them. What is special that we, for the first time, I asked the handicapped people themselves. I said, I really want to do a workshop with them. And I said, oh, I don't know if they can do this, but we did. And they all brought, brought uh, somebody with him, to, with them to, who helped them, maybe to draw or to explain. But he was drawing, everyone was drawing himself. And in the end, they were super proud that they could tell me what they wanted. And most of the things I knew, but for 10%, I heard new things, like they were afraid of something, or I had to take care of that. So you really can ask really everybody. You just have to find the right way. So take everybody serious and don't hesitate to do so. And the more you involve people, the more they love the process and accept the building and will, will bring you to the future. Um, so personalized spaces are very important. This is just a view from out of one of these client rooms. We made a low uh, bench where they can sit on the, on, the, on the bench of the window. And I go to a very special project, which is maybe my most important one. It's the smallest we have ever undertaken. And now I have to jump to the movie because it's not working. It's uh, Dolph, and Dolph lived in a... Um, Dolph is a client who has the mental capacity of a two-year-old child. But at the moment that we met him, he was 53 years old. And he really demolished everything. It was really horrible how he lived. His fingernails were blue from medication. And he um, was treated like real, like a, he was caged like an animal. And uh, lived in a horrible environment and he got more and more aggressive. And then, thank God, uh, the directors, the board came on an excursion and they said, do you have something really horrible? Yes, we have. We can show you. And uh, they showed this room and then the director said, fine, now it's gone. And we, we are really changed this. This will be a pilot and we will ask our office to uh, change the situation. Um, I will show you how the situation has been. In this facility, in the heart of Holland, some of the clients have severe behavioural problems. They are destructive and aggressive to themselves and their environment. One of them is Dolph, who has a mental capacity of a two-year-old. Aggressie uit zich voornamelijk fysiek bij Dolph. Dus dan hebben we het over schoppen, slaan, echt de de fysieke toenadering zoeken, dus beet pakken, trekken aan haren. Het is voor hem echt een uiting van, van onbegrip. Hij, hij snapt gewoon zijn wereld niet. Uh, en wij moeten daarmee handelen. Op het moment dat je bij hem zijn kamer in ging, was er altijd iemand als backup uh, stond er bij de deur om de veiligheid te waarborgen. Je kan het hem niet vragen, dus we weten het niet. Maar uh, dat hij veel sloopte, dat, uh, dat is duidelijk. Er stond eigenlijk uh, niets in zijn kamer wat los was. Uh, hij had een tafel, een stoel en een bed in zijn kamer staan. Dat stond vast uh, tegen de muur of tegen de vloer. Uh, en verder geen losse, losse attributen waarmee hij zichzelf of anderen wat, uh, wat aan kon doen. Er stond een groter hek eigenlijk om de buitenplaats heen. Ja, dat was gewoon een afschuwelijk gezicht. Ik heb er geen ander woord voor. Dat was echt uh, verschrikkelijk. Met name voor een moeder is dat extreem moeilijk. Op een gegeven moment heeft ze gezegd, ik ging het zo ver dat ze zei, nou ik doe het niet meer, ik kom niet meer, want ik, ik, er was dagen van overstuur, wat ik me goed voor kan stellen. His desolate quarters were not questioned by the staff at the time. Ja, nou, daar ga ik gewoon heel eerlijk beantwoorden. Uh, op dat moment wist ik niet beter. Tuurlijk heb je daar wel gevoel bij, dat het ja, niet iets is wat je iemand gunt. Maar op dat moment was, ja, leek het ons echt noodzakelijk om dat, uh, om dat zo in te richten. This was really a very difficult situation and I felt, oh my god, what, what can we do? I, I always feel very helpless in such a situation. Can you go? Tubes? Go to the back of the lecture. If you can stay for a moment until I've shown you the second movie, then I'm very glad. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. So, 
when we arrived, or when I arrived to, to have a look for him and the room, the situation was like this, as they showed in the movie, this fence, and even this steel chair was bolted to the, to the ground. It was, everything said, we are not trusting you at all. You, you, you are dangerous, you are, <laughs> yeah. We have to fix everything. This was his bed for 25 years. The situation was like this. And then I saw him, this was his outside space, inside space, and, and I saw him running in and out on his Wellington boots. And he was that busy, and I looked at him and I said, you just want to be a farmer. You play the role of a farmer. That's what you really want to be. And uh, you really get crazy in this environment. But this was his uh, door to lock him up. And then we asked the famous Dutch photographer, landscape photographer, to use uh, one of the, his beautiful landscape images to really give the people a feeling of, uh, <laughs> of a wide view. And we made a special wall where we integrated his television and we made this wall and you have seen the chapel we renovated. We used massive oak wood instead of steel and you cannot demolish this as well. It's quite hard, but it's another atmosphere. And maybe you think now why it's red, everybody thinking this. But Dolph is two years old and it's not about our taste. I would have done maybe gray or blue or black or you know something elegant like this. But he's a two-year-old child and he needs very warm colors, like what you see in the belly of a mother, this, this warm effect. And he returned into this, his space. You see also the light in the corner. The bed is situated now in the right position, much friendlier. He feels safe and he can lean against the wall. Everything is covered with this massive uh, oak. Open bathroom where he can enter. We covered the heating also with this oak and it, you get a completely other effect. It's much friendlier. Little details like his feet and his uh, bed. And I realized that he had a favorite spot. And what we did that we carved out his butt at this position because we could not tell him we know this. But we, we showed him this is, this is really your spot, you love this. And um, it's great. If he wouldn't have done this, it wouldn't have been defined. And now he loves it to sit there. It's really, really nice. Just this little attention. Then the next question was, and it shows again how intense the dialogue was with the team, because we were really ping-ponging, like, if we do this, what do you think, how will he react? And that's, I mean, we were so scared. We thought we can do only wrong, because it had been so harsh. And, and how can we change this? Um, thank God it turned out well. But we were super stressed, to be honest. We were really stressed. And then we asked, do you think we need this high fence again? Do you think he will run away? No, no, we don't think so, they said. We think he's afraid. Oh, this is really another approach, right? So we have to protect him, that nobody can get to him. So let's start with a part of the um, fence. And then he can decide when he feels safe lead to go to the others. It's just another approach, another result. Um, he had a favorite spot where he loved to pee and we put a little stones there to show him also you mentioned this and uh, there there's a view where he can look outside to the, to the street and every afternoon he's waving to everybody and um, make is making contact now and we use this fence sheep uh, um, this, this sheep fence um, to show that he's a farmer um, after two months I returned to his to him and his room because I was curious about um, how everything would have been. Because when, when he returned to his room, we were sitting next to the telephone and really waiting how he would react to hear the reaction. And they called us and they said, you know how he reacted? He jumped up and down and he said, this is beautiful, this is beautiful. And from on that moment, Dolph fell in love with his room and his entire life changed and he became calm and happy. And um, two months later, I arrived while he was making his bed and putting this little carpet in front. He was so proud that he really wanted to keep everything very beautiful. So instead of hating his room and showing this by his aggression, what, what, what he finally did um, in the beginning, and now he loved it and he protected it. And this center approach now, I've got to go to the next movie.
Dolph's living quarters got a complete makeover. Everything was still bolted to the floor, but the material used was custom made. The atmosphere, friendly and open plan. Nou, in het begin waren wij heel erg sceptisch, want je komt ja, van punt A waar ja, alles heel strak geregeld was en er, ja, hij kon eigenlijk niets op die kamer uh, kapot maken bijvoorbeeld. Nou, toen kwamen er een heleboel veranderingen en toen hadden wij zoiets, nou we moeten het nog zien hoe het, uh, hoe het gaat. Maar eigenlijk ging dat heel natuurlijk, een hele natuurlijke overgang. Hij vond het uh, prachtig, die kamer. Dolph is extremely proud of his room. He even has his own television set. Je bent heel blij als er aan begonnen wordt, sowieso, hè? Dat, dat mensen het initiatief nemen om uiteindelijk uh, het leven voor Dolf een stukje mooier te maken. Er is echt gedragsverandering uh, is er opgetreden en dat, ja, dat is denk ik voor een groot deel te, te wijten ook aan die verbouwing. Eigenlijk was het toen gewoon, ja, nu is de situatie zo, dus nu gaan we er zo mee om. En er was ook geen uh, weg meer terug naar uh, het, het isolement waar hij in zat. Nee, hij was nu gewoon vrij om zich te bewegen waar hij wilde en waar hij kon. His tendency to hurt himself or break everything around him has dramatically reduced. Waar het vroeger waar ze cadeaus heel snel kapot gingen, daar blijft het nu gewoon weken, soms maanden blijft het staan op zijn kamer en hij is er trots, trots op. Hij beweegt zich veel meer door de groep heen. In de koffiekamer of in het, in het gedeelte daar waar de televisie staat, wat een beetje de centrale ruimte is. En nou, als het hem dan even te veel wordt, dan, uh, dan trekt hij zich weer terug op eigen terrein en dan gaat hij weer naar zijn kamer toe. Dus dat, uh, dat sociale contact is enorm verbeterd. Je werkt in de zorg omdat je, ja, je, wil, je wil iets betekenen voor die cliënt. En uh, doordat je hem veel gelukkiger ziet op dit moment dan wat hij toen was, ja, dat, dat, ja, eigenlijk is dat gevoel onbeschrijfelijk om het zo te noemen. Je zit me kijken. Ja? Ja, mag. Je zit me kijken. It's... I want to show you. Thank you. I'd like to show you some results. Sorry, we're not done yet. <laughs> But this is um, um, what was so important. I just skip this. Before, Dolph was secluded every day for a couple of hours. Sometimes they 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 found him too dangerous, and they just dropped him in his in his room. And now it it's reduced, and it's it's not nothing. He's completely normal. Then about uh, expenses, we usually say, ah, it is too expensive to do this, but you cannot imagine how expensive healthcare costs are. So to give an example, you see the blue line, that is the, the common healthcare expenses per year, 120,000 uh, euros a year, and it was topped by 120,000 because he was that dangerous. And this is completely reduced to zero, and we had one time this 75,000 euros to, to change his room. We felt very guilty about that. But when I heard uh, how much the expenses for his health care were, it, it, it's a really big motivation to change spaces. This is with his mother, and she became super happy after the renovation. And uh, yeah, that's where, where she was. She, were talked about, she talked about that for years, to ch uh, that this could be changed. And after that, she died. She was, uh, had found her patients. So what, do, what does it come down to? I try to explain what we did, what, is, what was important to reach this um, process, to, to reach this result. Um, oops. So you have the existing situation and what we did, we listened and we observed and this is an ongoing process and then we had this intuition where we said, okay, we, Dolph has, wants to be a farmer, but he could have been a Formula One uh, person as well, you know, then it would have been that. It's very important to see who is that person this interpretation and that to get behind the secret of this person and to really design something that fits for him and made a tailor-made uh, environment. And then you get this personalized and humanized centered environment. So what we always do, we start with workshops, we look, listen to the people, and then you have this, this moment of intuition, you really have to, to listen to that and you should all do that. Don't think too theoretical, but really follow your intuition, what you feel, what somebody needs. And then you get this personalized and humanized environment. I'll show you a couple 
more projects like this because this was just a start for these very extreme situations. This is uh, Anthony. Um, he's living in this room now. And this was his life before. Six years, he lived for six years in this space. And then his parents took him out, brought him to another facility, and it became better. Um, but the idea is to change again his room to make it better and to really look what he loves and what he needs and he loves lavender, he loves the sun and uh, he loves to puzzle and the sun and the moon and this is the process with the, 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 the caretakers and the mother and we really looked to make a space that is really tailor-made so it, actually Anthony is a little child, he's four years old so we really make a space for a child actually and it's uh, with sun and moon on, on top of his um, bed, uh, the lavender and, and, and at the end of the bed, growing out of his bed, something where he can do his puzzles. So we made this little model to show and to, to help within this process. And it's really very, pers very person-centered to get some results. So you can close the, the puzzle and take it away. If he's aggressive, that it's, it's gone. He, can do different things and read and um, have a big um, wall where he can zoom in on Google Maps because he loves maps and can zoom in on whole Holland out and in and busy with that. And that's something we will uh, build now in next month. We start. It's for a um, woman from India and uh, she lived in this environment, demolished everything and uh, she's always naked because she's always undressing. So she feels very, very unsafe. What we are going to do is that we really, we really look for her and we analyze that she's actually a little girl, who, four, three, four years old maybe, who loves pink stuff and very soft things. Um, so what we are going to make, and she's always laying on her bed naked and with just a blanket, and we make a cocoon where she can really hide in and we make an outside space where she can run out and cannot be seen because the lamelles are that way that people from top floor cannot watch her and things like that. She can be free and just enjoy because if you open the window, she just do, do, does this up over her skin. So we also this center, this person-centered uh, approach with this cherry wood and, and warm colors, what she loves. This will be her view. And we will do something very special with the wall because she has to be a bling bling. She loves bling bling. And yeah, this pink and, and these glitters. So we will make a very special wall with flowers and uh, motifs that come out from her culture that she feels uh, gets a very special uh, feeling in her room. Last, uh, one of the last things, psychiatric clinic in Lima. We were asked for advice. And what can we do just not making a normal building? And I said, just look at the situation now. Look how the country is, what they love, what is their identity. They love these colors. Just use this, create something that creates fam familiarity for people. That they cook and eat together. And they have these, court oops, these courtyards with these very colored things and that, that, that the bedrooms go to these areas, things like that. So a personalized and humanized healthcare, personalized and humanized architecture, and by this maybe a personalized and humanized world. I think I skipped the last part. Maybe it's too long, or would you like to show me also the about lecturing? Because this is the last thing I would like to show. It's 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 not that long anymore. I go very quickly because I teach also in Rotterdam, and some of you have been maybe to Rotterdam. There was an excursion, an exchange. Um, so, what we did last semester was a care project and we, we thought how can we reach that the students come up with their own ideas. So every student was allowed to, um, we, the question was how can we create a future healthcare system for Zealand. Zealand is a beautiful province in Holland at the sea and where everybody wants to live but it's very empty. You see these crosses and these are the hospitals and there are wide distances. I think all of the world we have this situation, it's widely spread out. Um, it ages people, old people love to live there, like in Florida. <laughs> but in the summer, lots of tourists come there and it's, it doubles or it's three times the, the um, amount of people uh, of, who are there then. And how can you create a healthcare system for that? 
So how can we keep Ceylon so healthy, different projects? I just jumped to the, what the students did. It's uh, about not making normal hospitals a normal system, but uh, a smaller scale where you can go to, to facilities that are nearby, then a bit bigger, on, uh, bigger areas, and then some hospitals for very special care. And we asked the students to all find, uh, to create one, one thing they found important, how they could change the healthcare for the future. So some made a, um, um, I will show from a blind institute where, where somebody can go who's blind, or deaf, sorry, deaf, um, um, facilities for elderly, different things. So we have 15 different projects and every student chose his own location and his own topic. And this is really super motivating because they came up with a lot of great things. And because we let them free, they came, I think, with much better results than we were used to that. Uh, and we, but we started with three things and that was very important for me to, to sensibilize them. So we said, come up for three minutes with three images and three faces. So tell three stories of healthcare problems in your family or from, from your friends. So they, they came up with what their grandparents had and everything. And, um, and this was a picture of one of the students and she showed, this is the wedding photo of my parents. And in the meanwhile, 11 people already died since then. And look, the diseases they had. So it's in every family. And that was so interesting that everybody realized it's everywhere. And, but then we asked them, uh, do research. Uh, just go with a wheelchair and with this, um, with, to, as if you would be blind and document it. And if you do this, you sensibilize very quickly. It was just 20 minutes, but try to get to the toilet, to go to the toilet when you're in a wheelchair, try to uh, go down the stair when you're blind and you don't know when the handrail stops, things like that. And they documented all the things and the, at the academy they were wrong, like trying to get back into the building via the ramp and exactly that closed door was closed, things like that. It was super interesting and they, they found out uh, quickly. Uh, we had an excursion and um, all the cables are there, it's like an infus. <laughs> and um, we asked them to, uh, for one day in the field, that's also important, just go there and, and work with elderly and, and see how things work for the topic you would like to choose. Uh, holding lectures and seminars, this is in the studio, and then we asked them to create a concept, start with something then this is the guy who did the, the who used an old uh, train station and made a, a center for um, deaf people. And what is really amazing that he, now he has contact with the contractor, with the mayor, and everything he went on, he became that motivated that maybe this project will be built is really great. And he created special spaces for them. He really thought, uh, 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 sorry, thought about the spaces and create something. And it was really his topic and he was super motivated because he could choose it himself. And this girl made from an old football, from soccer field, she made a new community because she said, oh, these soccer fields, they are not used anymore, but they are really integrated in the society. Why can't we make a new uh, creative environment? So she, she just used this plot and this was just the beginning, I will show you later. But she made also like a menu that people, old people, young people can help each other. Oh, you can look for my kids, I can grow vegetables for you while you're away and you can do, do, do the, the cleaning or the things like that. So in the end, this soccer field ended up with a really interesting community and with a, um, a project where you can add pieces when the family grows or you can reduce again. for these additional things. You see this plug-in system. And this was a really interesting guy. He made, a, this is the last project. Um, he made, um, what is this, a forensic? No, it's uh, when before, what's the name? Before uh, people die, it's a pa pediatric uh, clinic, but for children. We always forget that, because also children can have cancer and die. Uh, and we said, okay, it doesn't, let's open it and it's a, it's a farm around and it doesn't make, uh, it doesn't matter if the donkey comes to, the, to, the ch to this child into the, into the room that he can touch it because bacteria don't play a role anymore. But it got, went very far. I made a beautiful little glass farm. And it was really innovative. So things like that. We were very proud of these students. So just, and this was the end, presentation. And we're all done.
Thank you. For it. We have a few minutes for questions. You're late now. <laughs> you have a question? Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, the glass that you use for the windows and all that, is it sure that it's unbreakable? In which situation? The glass? You yeah, meant? In the mental hospital. Yes, um, you have a different kind of glass, but you, we usually use security glass. So it's um, secure, yeah, I don't know, this is the Dutch word maybe. So when you break it, then it, it breaks down in little, little pieces. Because I, I'm a psychiatrist and I worked in the hospital, and uh, when the patients were angry, and it could be for any reason, they yes. don't know, they would like to break windows. This is true what you say, and you know, um, for example, like Dolph, uh, usually, patients like Dolph did the movie I showed, they use Lexan and things like that. But Lexan, uh, this is a, a kind of plastic, a very strong uh, plastic. Um, um, but he did not demolish anything anymore. And I think this is the important difference, that you, that you change an environment that somebody really feels okay and safe. Because they, my, but what I learned from that is that, that, they be, that he became that aggressive because he couldn't tell that he hated his environment, that it was so ugly, and that he suffered from that. He even tried to, to get up. The, the last thing he could do with his Blair fingers, the, 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 the screws from the ceiling until the blood was dripping down. Things like that, you know. That, that helpless. Yeah. You didn't close at all by uh, anthroposophic architecture. You made a comment about the space being like uh, light coming in through the womb, and that sounds very much like Rudolf Steiner. Are you familiar <laughs> with Steiner? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, but I'm. Use the colors of the room and this is true. Things. To be honest, I, I um, stayed for the last years of my school time, I stayed at a Rudolf Steiner school. And I worked in, a, uh, in an office for one year that were specialized. And they, they, te they taught me this theory about the colors. And when you're very young, uh, which color you need. And when you are like 14, you can better paint a classroom in kind of blue, because then they need this more to calm down. And when you're little, it's, you start with uh, red, orange, yellow, and you turn into green, blue, and then you go back to orange, red when they are 18. It's really interesting. And you can reach a lot with that. Yes. Have you ever um, worked on designing psychiatric facilities in a prison environment? Actually, these things are, um, Dolph was in, in kind of prison. Um, most of these aggressive patients, they are closed up. So when I'm in a facility where Dolph lives, and I start now with the next project, um, then they cannot get out themselves. It doesn't feel like a normal prison. But actually, they are locked up, yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends very much on how much they can stand and how well they are. If they, and also, their level is too low, so you cannot just open. They would run away, some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other day, when we met yesterday, talking yes. about the snooze lantern. I forgot to say this. Yes, yeah. thank so you. I was just curious uh, if yeah. you been able to use any of those techniques in your designs as you developed them. Could you, sorry, I, Have you been able to use any of the snoozlin techniques in any of your designs? Yes, I used it um, at the, the first two projects. Um, the, the daycare center with this touch, we did snoozle, and we did also with the island. There we had this, uh, where we had this, you know, when, when the, these patients who are like babies had to enter, and there we have this, it, it depends very much on the age of the, the clients. And there we integrated also these snoozle rooms. But what I realized is that we, the times are changing and we use it less, less and less. And also like a very de these um, captionized soft rooms, you, uh, they, they are almost gone. So you try to uh, treat them more in a normal way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.